the cash flow summary or a summary of a particular sheet, I like to go and refer to it up the very top. So let's do that. I think all of those are the same except for this one. So I've just copied those ones down and I'm just going to grab the interest expense as well. So let's go Alt equals and let's copy those ones across. And all I'm going to do now is tax payable. So I've just entered some more lines in. Just so select it and so insert rows. And we're going to get the tax payable. Now remember we said that it was tax rate is 30%. So if we multiply that tax rate by this one, once again that calculations pops up. I just delete that. That's going to be our tax, yeah? Very simple sort of analysis there. I'm um, going to change that out and I am going to link that back up the top. Okay, so tax payable. Copy that one across. So shift arrow right a few times and control R and then there is our cash flow summary. Okay, it's not complete, right? We're still saying we don't know what this debt value is, right? So let's go back to our assumptions page and then let's see how we target a particular minimum debt service coverage ratio. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in a actual so this is our target, sorry, that should have been minimum debt service. This is our actual minimum debt service coverage ratio. Right, so actual, but this is going to be a calc rather. And control F3, control N and enter. So where are we going to get this from? Well, we've got to build it into our model. So if we go down to the financing section, we're going to put in a thing called ratios. Now, the debt service coverage ratio basically equals your cash flow available for debt service divided by your debt service. Now, there can be broader definitions of that, but that's the basics of it. So what it's saying is, how much cash do you have and how much is related to debt service? The higher the debt service coverage ratio is, the better the project is or the more coverage before you start being in financial distress. So let's have a look at that. So let's go cash flow. Now let's not do that. Let's just go CFADS. We've already named it, so CFADS. And we'll copy that across. and. Our debt service is, now we can take it from here, let's just take it from here. Rightio. And so what we said is our cash flow available for debt service divided by our debt service is going to give us our debt service coverage ratio or DSCR. So this is going to be a ratio. So let's go and see what happens. Mm. Isn't, isn't that interesting? At the very start of the project, we don't have enough cash flow to pay for our debt service. Okay, so what that's telling me is there's too much debt in this structure. So let's go and let's put a minimum value here. So equals min. We're going to select these cash flows here, or sorry, these ratios here. And let's, so our minimum occurs at the start of the project and it's 0 0.93. So if it's less than one, that means we can't meet our debt obligations. So we probably would be in default, or we most definitely would be in default. So let's go and go equals, go back to the calculations, grab that minimum debt service coverage ratio, and then let's try and adjust this. So let's 
see what happens when we put down this down to 400,000. Okay, so the debt service coverage ratio is coming up. Now, what we can do is we can go, let's do a really quick one. And we can go, so Alt, and I believe in the new Excel, uh, yeah, it's the what if analysis uh, for the goal. So you can always use, if you're used to shortcuts from obviously 2003, then you can always use those shortcuts. So let's just push goal seek here. We want to set that one to zero by changing this cell here. Okay, let's push enter. That's pretty close to zero. So now our actual debt service coverage ratio equals our target debt service coverage ratio. Okay, so let's go back. Or no, let's firstly put in a check. So let's put in some checks. Now usually you'd have a check page, but we're going to put our checks on the assumptions page here. We're going to have a debt service coverage ratio check. So all this is saying is equals that minus that. So we can go if that minus that equals zero, comma, OK, otherwise check. Now it's not going to equal exactly zero, so we're going to have to round it slightly and we'll round it to one decimal place. So we just do a round function there and that should be okay now. So that's fine. And there's one of our checks. Now we can do some conditional formatting on it. So conditional formatting in your home menu and we can go a new rule and cell value is equal to and then okay and we're going to set that format to fill green that's a bad green let's go with that green okay okay so that'll format now i'm going to add another rule and we're going to say Well, we can go manage rules rather, edit rule, or let's go new rule and format only cells that contain equal to, and then when it goes to check, we want it to come out in a nice red color. So stop, something's gone wrong, and apply. Okay, so let's see what happens if we change this. I'm going to change it straight back. Okay, it goes to red. So 1.25, let's control Z that. Okay, and that's that. Okay, that pretty much concludes our tutorial. So let's just sum up the basics that we've looked at in this tutorial or this brownfield acquisition of a toll road. So you need five things in a financial model. The first one is obviously the assumptions, which are critical to the outcome of the model. The second one is the construction costs if you're looking at a greenfield or a startup project. The third one is the operations, so we're looking at the revenue, the expenses, and the taxes. The fourth one is the financing, and the fifth one is obviously the cash flows. So what we found from this model is that we could purchase the asset at $504.6 million, of which 354 million would be debt and 151 million approximately would be equity. So we're talking about a debt to equity ratio of 70 to 30, which is typical with infrastructure projects. Sometimes it can go obviously a lot higher 
and it depends on the credit worthiness of the guarantor in most cases, or if it's not guaranteed, the credit worthiness of the revenue stream that's coming through. Now, I think I've overbaked this cake. I think I've taken too much time on it. I think we're up to the 70 minute mark, but hopefully you can take some key points away from this tutorial.